Uh, have you ever thought about adding servers for previous expansions as they were then? No. And, and by the way, you don't want to, that, to do that either. You think you do, but you don't. Massively multiplayer online games, one of the greatest genres ever created. Hundreds of games, thousands of hours, and millions of players. The online gaming world is busier now than it's ever been before, and the range of games available means no matter what kind of adventure you want to have, you will be able to find it. But these games aren't without their flaws, so in this series, let's examine the seven deadly sins of MMO design. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Strife Hayes. I've been playing and analyzing MMO games on YouTube for several years now, and over that time I've come to notice some constants in the development cycle, small things that even big games can do, which really damage the overall experience. So let's analyze the seventh and final sin of MMO design, pride, which includes over-promising on your ambitious project and refusal to listen to the fans. Before we begin, please consider dropping a like on the video or subscribing to the channel and ringing the bell icon so you don't miss a single future video. A massive thank you to all my supporters on Patreon and Twitch who make all my content possible. Right, let's begin. Pride, often described by scholars and academics as the root of all sin, the overpowering belief that you are better than others, a feeling of pleasure or satisfaction derived from your own achievements, the enjoyment of being admired. Pride is a strange sin. While most people think it shouldn't be a sin to be proud of your work or your accomplishments, pride works slowly. It creeps into your mind and your life and it whispers, you are better than others. It is the enemy of humility and is always the eventual downfall of many a great kingdom. Pride leads to the belief that you cannot lose or be wrong. Pride comes, as they say, before a fall. So how does pride tie into making an MMO? Well. Pride is the belief that your work and your creation is better than others and a feeling of superiority. So for me, pride begins to interfere with design when the following happens. Amateur designers trying to create the greatest MMO ever and vastly overreaching or established MMOs ignoring player feedback. Let's examine these, starting with amateur developers, because pride is not only the act of taking pleasure in your own achievements, it's also the reason unskilled people remain unskilled, because their pride prevents them from being willing to learn. It takes a great deal of humility to admit you don't know something and start to train it. Pride is the reason people don't take lessons in things, because then they'd have to admit they're not as good as they think they are. Since starting to work on YouTube and specialising in the MMO world, I've had many, many Discord, Twitter or YouTube messages from people, sometimes small groups, sometimes individuals, claiming they're making an MMO RPG. I try to respond to all of them because I'm happy to talk to anyone and I think that's an amazing thing to do, but I often find the people creating them are vastly underestimating the difficulty of these projects or overestimating their own abilities. And nowhere is that more apparent than when I ask what their game is going to be like and they tell me it's going to be like everything. To fully understand this, I need to share an analogy that was given to me by the actor Raji James, my excellent mentor of several years. Imagine you walk into a pharmacy to buy some medicine and you see bottles of pills lined up on the shelf. One of them simply says, stops headaches now. The other says, stops sickness. Or a third that says, stops muscle pain fast. Then there's another bottle that says, Kinda helped with dizziness a bit, sort of okay at stopping sickness, sometimes cures migraines. If you had a headache, you would grab the bottle that says stops headaches. You have one issue to solve and one thing does that very well. If you were sick, you'd grab the sickness pills. No one, ever, grabs the sort of good at everything pill because they never ever suit anyone in the moment better than the specific pills. Games, films, books, and all forms of entertainment media are the same, MMOs are included. If you want to take down giant anime-style bosses with over-the-top classes, you play Terra. You don't play Terra for crafting or story, and Terra knows this, so there is little to no crafting, and the story is almost impossible to find. You play Terra, for the big fights. If you want to play a game with good end game raiding and lots of bosses and mechanics and very well defined roles and classes, you play Warcraft. Warcraft doesn't have open world player housing or open world jumping puzzles or trade routes you can set up between towns because it does not want to be those things. It could add them, but it chooses not to. It knows it's a dungeon and raid game. And while it may have other elements, it knows and players know if you want high quality end game raiding, you go for Warcraft. 
What about slower paced, relaxed, skilling gameplay where speed isn't essential and the fights aren't always epic and flashy? Well, old school RuneScape has that covered. They know the limitations of their system and the engine. They know what they can feasibly create and they push toward that. It's click and wait, it's much slower paced and people are fine with that because there is a demographic that demands this style of gameplay and RuneScape does that better than anyone else. In each case, the game knows its demographic and just like the labelled pill from earlier, they know exactly what problem, what type of player boredom they're trying to solve. They know the type of player they want to attract and that is who they make content for. But what happens when a game tries to do everything? What if you want an easy to get into casual experience that also caters to the hardcore where you can get decent items and not have them be outclassed every expansion but also want slow skilling and fast skilling and slow raids and fast raids and everything. Well, you end up with Guild Wars 2 with its horizontal progression. Guild Wars 2 does have jumping puzzles and crafting and raids and dungeons and cosmetics and guilds and player versus player and has often been described as wide as an ocean, deep as a puddle. Because while it has all these systems, it hasn't focused on any one of them to become an industry leader in it. You can play the entire game and ignore almost every system and still effectively finish the game, meaning no single system had any actual importance. It is still a well-made game with excellent voice acting and very enjoyable main story, it just tried to have absolutely everything in it and be all things to all men, and just like throwing every topping onto a pizza, it doesn't quite work. New developers fall into this trap all the time. They want to make an MMO, and they don't just want to be world class at one thing, they want to be world class at everything. So instead of choosing one system and saying, we are going to do this better than anyone else, which could feasibly happen, they simply state the unmeasurable, often unachievable goal of, we are going to do everything better than everyone else. If you were designing an MMO right now, ask yourself, why will players play your game? If players want raiding, they'll play Warcraft. If they want crafting, they'll go to the Elder Scrolls Online. If they want story, they'll play Final Fantasy XIV. Unless you can do one of those elements better than the other games, they will not play yours. And if you try to have all of them and be better than all of them and you fall slightly short on all of them, which is highly likely, then you're giving no one any reason to play. If your pride as a developer prevents you from stepping away from the I'm going to make the best game ever mentality, then you will end up making a mediocre game in every area and players do not stick with mediocre products. It's important to note I'm not saying don't try and make an MMO. I will support anyone who tries fully. Just realise that you must decide what matters most in your MMO and focus on making that element as good as it can be. And believe me, that element is not everything, no matter how much your pride tries to tell you it is. Pride as a new designer is what will prevent you from saying, we don't need to focus on this. It will keep you believing you have to be the all-singing, all-dancing superstar of the genre and it will slow your progress to a crawl. But that's an issue with newer developers, naive, passionate amateurs that don't understand what they're getting into. What about the pride of the larger companies? What happens when pride overtakes the big boys? Well, we've seen what happens. We've seen it play out on the stage. Uh, have you ever thought about adding servers for previous expansions as they were then? No. And, and by the way, you don't want to, th to do that either. You think you do, but you don't. Games companies make games. And while many of the developers and designers started as passionate gamers, they often transition into businessmen and their gaming time is replaced with business time. And so they often become disconnected from the modern playable state of the game they're actually making. In a fascinating interview with Mark Rosewater, the current guy heading up Magic the Gathering, he correctly said that interesting mechanics does not always mean fun gameplay. And while many game companies and designers are very good at making interesting choices, they often forget to stop and ask themselves, are these choices we're making actually fun to play? While they may think adding hundreds of new systems and methods and abilities and collectibles and events into the game every update is interesting, and it is, 
it's not always fun to experience or play. Pride now begins to creep in, as game companies see a product they create become more successful and then begin to believe they cannot possibly make anything bad. They derive such extreme pleasure from their success, they start to believe that whatever they do, simply by virtue of it being them doing it, will succeed again. Now developers make the game, and players experience the game. Developers often have a very specific viewpoint and a very specific experience of the gameplay. They understand the technical limitations and the advances and the techniques needed to make an event happen. But the players have a separate unique viewpoint. The players don't care about the technical side of the design. They care exclusively about the gameplay and the final product. Game design is a complex thing. I watched an interview with the creator of Dead Space, one of the best horror games of all time, and I discovered that the tentacle sequence in the ship was so complex to make it almost broke the development team. They had to invent new technology just to make it, but they did. Now players don't care it was stupidly complex to make. Players just care it was a good fun part of the game. If you're in charge of planting a forest, then you will likely be able to see the entire forest from high up, but you won't know the situation moment to moment on the ground. If I'm in charge of checking the tree roots within the forest, then I have a much closer real-time view, but I cannot see the whole project. We have different views and experiences of the same project, and only by communicating can we both fully understand how it's really going. If our pride convinces either of us that we're more important than the other, then we will believe the other has nothing to offer us and we both stop communicating and lose out on vital information. When pride rears its egotistical head, designers stop listening to players. The understanding of the player base and the experience of the day-to-day -day grinder is suddenly irrelevant to the massive multi-million company because you couldn't possibly know better than them, could you? Pride is what stops companies from creating the product the player base wants by listening to feedback from its most passionate and experienced fans and instead makes the product that it feels is best exclusively, regardless of player input. Pride, if you want to be successful, can often be your enemy. When pride steps down and developers listen and accept they may have made bad choices throughout the time and they might not have all the answers, we get the products that players want. Old School RuneScape, Classic Warcraft, Arcage Unchained. Old School RuneScape polls every major change to the game, and if the suggested change doesn't reach a certain percentage of approval from the player base, it doesn't go ahead. The developers listen to the players. The design viewpoint and understanding mix with the player viewpoint and moment-to-moment -moment gameplay understanding, and Old School RuneScape advances in a way both designers and players agree with. Pride has been removed, progress is made. Oh, also that you think you do but you don't guy, the one who was so rude, arrogant and dismissive to that passionate fan who politely asked about vanilla servers. He was the same guy that had to announce Warcraft Classic several years later, which went on to become one of the most successful things Warcraft did in years. You can almost see the pain in his face as he does so. Oh, he's now in charge of Warcraft as well. Let's hope his pride doesn't get in the way. Again. Pride. The root of all sin, the belief that you are better than others and so infallible to error. It will convince you that your work must be greater than anything else ever existing. It will prevent you from listening to others because others are beneath you. It will do absolutely nothing to help you create a product that people actually want. Pride, the seventh and final sin of MMO design. So remember designers, when you say, I know exactly what the player base wants without even asking them, you think you do, but you don't. And there ends the Seven Sins of MMO Design series. Thank you for watching. Another huge thank you to my supporters on Patreon and Twitch who made all my content possible. If you're enjoying the series, then please consider supporting the Patreon from only one pound a month. Or come chat to me live on Twitch or join the Discord. Links in the description below. As for the next series, well, we've thrown a lot of blame toward the developers. But we as players need to step up to the mark and take some responsibility too. So next time, we'll be delving in to the seven deadly sins of MMO players. Cheers for watching, and as always, have a great day.